before I get started with this video, hit pause, go grab your water, and let's drink some water because I know, okay, I don't know, but I'm like 90% sure that you're not hydrated enough because I'm not hydrated enough. So let's drink some water. For real though, y'all, it has been so brutal down in Texas lately. This is our second week of 100 degree weather. The high being like over 101, 102. There was even one day it was 107 and that's not even the feels like. <laughs> Stay hydrated, everyone. <laughs> With that being said, hello everyone, what's up? If you're new here, my name's Elise, and if you're not new here, great to see you guys again. If you have not joined the fam, we would love to have you join us and our little bookish community. Today I am talking about short books when you are short on time. A few months ago, I was in a terrible reading slump but I still have so many books on my TBR that I wanted to read, so I started gravitating towards shorter books. I have grown such an appreciation for short books. I have to say I was a little bit of a book snob for a little while. <laughs> for a long time, if a book was shorter than 300 pages, I simply wouldn't read it because I didn't think that there was a way for an author to put enough substance in a book like that, and I wanted to read a book of substance. Well, these books that I have read have completely and totally proven me wrong that these authors are so talented and can put so much in a book that's 300 or less pages. Some of these have been five star reads for me so I'm very excited to show you guys because I know we are all busy and we want to push through our TBR, we want to read books if we can, but sometimes we just don't have as much time so that's when we should reach for these short books. first short book that I have for you is We Are Okay by Nina LaCure. This is a contemporary YA with a dash of romance. There is a little splash of it in there, but it's very much not the main focus. We are following Marin. She has just left for college. She's refusing to come home from college. She's refusing to leave for Christmas break. We come to find out that Marin has a terrible secret. Since acquiring this secret, she has just cut herself off from the rest of the world, from her support group, from her hometown, from her best friend Mabel and Mabel's family, and we don't know why. In this 234 page book, Nina LaCour does a fantastic job of showing you what unconditional love looks like. I have never seen a bigger, better example of unconditional love than I have in this book. I think that a lot of teenagers or young adults do go through this phase in life, especially when those bigger things happen in their lives. It's kind of their catalyst for finding themselves and for doing some self-discovery and to figure out how they want to pursue their future. And I think that this book does a really good job of capturing that. This writing style is my favorite kind of writing style. It just has a blend of exactly what they're doing versus using metaphors and similes and just these literary devices so that your imagination can fill in those gaps. If you can't tell, I really enjoyed this book. So if you're short on time but you want a emotionally packed book, this is the one for you. The next book that I have is Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. I have a funny story for you guys. So I had some friends in South Korea that were also avid readers. We would talk about books all the time. And so I thought that my friend Charlotte recommended this book. I thought I saw it on her story graph that she had read it. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to pick this up. I picked it up on sale in audiobook format. So I read it. I listened to it. I loved it. It was a four star read for me. So I go to text Charlotte and I'm like, hey girl, I just read this book. I had a really great time. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I was like, this book that you recommended. And she's like, I didn't read that book. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, it was still really good. <laughs> so that's how I came to read this book. No one in my life recommended it. I have been the one who's recommended it. And I'm so glad that I read it and listened to it because I ended up loving it so much. It's one of my favorite books of 2022. And I have slowly kept thinking about it. And now it's a five star read for me just simply because of how much it lives rent free in my brain. Nothing to See Here is a magical realism adult book. This book follows this woman. She got a scholarship to go to this really prestigious 
private academy. She and her roommate were best friends who were both like basketball players on the scholarship together. Something happens. I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but she gets kicked out of the school. And since then, her life and her future has just kind of crumbled. Well, she gets a call from her best friend from that school and is like, hey, so I want you to come be a nanny to my stepkids. Come to find out that those kids, those twins, burst into flames when they become emotionally unstable. <laughs> She's like, yeah, whatever. What else do I have going for me? So ensues this story of us getting to know the kids, what causes them to burst into flames, their history. We see a little bit more of the history of the two best friends and what that incident was that kicked her out of school. If you love found family, this book is for you. I loved how dry and humorous the main character was. She's just so quirky and humorous. I really enjoyed it. It made me laugh. It made me giggle. It made me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. And it is a really fun short read. This book is 254 pages. It's also fantastic on audiobook. The narrator does a really great job of bringing these characters to life. <laughs> this next one. <laughs> Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. I started reading the series two or three years ago just before it exploded and everyone and their mom heard about it for good reason. <laughs> Ice Planet Barbarians is a whopping 248 pages. Now these special editions are a little bit longer because they include a short story, the Ice Planet Honeymoon short story. They follow the main couples after they get together. If you have Kindle Unlimited, they are separate stories. Ice Planet Barbarians follows Georgie. There is this alien race, this alien species known for being human traffickers and they tend to get these young women and snatch them from earth and take them and sell them in space. That's where Georgie wakes up. Spaceship crashes, not a spoiler, on this ice planet where we find the native species of aliens that live on this planet and they interact. Now this book, I'm fine saying it, it's not for everyone. But if you look at this cover and you think, oh, there is no substance to that story, you are absolutely wrong. There is substance, there is plot, there is more than just spice and heat. While there is a lot more of that than in most books, it's still really well done. Like the whole series has its own plot and beginning, middle, and wrap up and all of that to the whole series, let alone each book. This whole series is adult sci-fi romance. Give it a try. The next book to read if you're short on time is Nora Goes Off Script. Nora Goes Off Script is a 257 page book about Nora who is a script writer or a screenplay writer. She goes through a pretty rough divorce. Her husband was an absolute mooch and walked out of her and her kid's life. So she wrote a movie about it. Turns out that movie got sold and we start at the beginning of the book with them filming that video on her property. The main male character who plays her ex-husband is apparently a really big name, aloof guy, but come wrapping of the film, he asks Nora to stay on her property and he'll pay her. Nora needs a little cash in the bank after her mooch of a husband, so she agrees, and they kind of get to know each other. It is a contemporary romance, an adult contemporary romance. However, I don't think that that's all this book is about. This book is about self-discovery. It's about grit, because Nora goes through some stuff, but she never gives up for her kids. There's some found family in here. There's some romance. What I really enjoyed about this book is the duality of it because there are moments where Nora is just being her mom self and her PJs cooking her kids breakfast trying to get them to school. Then there are moments where Nora has some success and she gets to get all glammed up and go to like the Emmys or the Oscars, whatever they're called. So there's a little bit of glitz and glam, there's a little bit of everyday life, but it's wrapped up really well. I loved the ending of this book. There's a surprise in this book no spoilers but it shook me i did not see it coming i had no idea that that would be 
the reason why some events happen at the end of the book. I even read this in one day. <laughs> the same goes for this book, and that is The Sea of Tranquility. This is one of my favorite reads so far in 2023. I loved it so much. I borrowed it from Livy, loved it so much that I bought it for myself. I can't wait to reread and annotate it. The Sea of Tranquility is a 255 page book by Emily St. John Mendel. This is a science fiction, speculative fiction novel. This takes place in different time periods, one of the time periods being in the future, where people live both on the moon and on Earth. On the moon, in the future, there is a time institution. A scientist there discovers an anomaly with time, so they send a man to go and interview people who have interacted with Anomaly so that they can figure out what the issue is, figure out what it means, and see what it means for the future. We follow this man as he's going and interviewing these different people. I feel like when I talk about this book and explain what it's about, it does not do it justice. Emily St. John Mandel did such a fantastic job of slowly dropping hints and little pieces of information so that it just kept you on your toes and you just wanted to know more. You wanted to know what was coming next. The twist at the end of this book is also, I didn't see it coming. I probably should have seen it coming, but I didn't see it coming, and therefore it was really delightful. I loved this book so much. Definitely give it a chance. The next book I would like to suggest for a short read is Before the Coffee Gets Cold. Before the Coffee Gets Cold is a 272 page translated Japanese fiction book by the author Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This is magical realism where at this very obscure, very hard to find cafe in Japan, if you sit at a very particular table and are served a very certain coffee at a very specific temperature, you can travel into the past. However, Nothing you do is going to change what has happened in between that point in time that you went to in the past and the current time. It doesn't change anything. But we get a few different people who have traveled to the past and what they've learned from it, where they traveled to, why they traveled to that time, and the effect of it afterwards. It's very thoughtful, it's very thought-provoking and insightful. The overarching theme, I think, is to just what you think is happening or what you think happened is only the surface level of what you experienced. So many other people in that moment are experiencing things in their own way. Their own thoughts are happening. They have different incentives for what they're doing than we may understand. It made me feel good and very thoughtful after reading it, so if you're interested in a book like that, I highly suggest Before the Coffee Gets Cold. There are also two more and a fourth one coming out in the near future. The next book I would like to suggest is Texas Rose Forever by Katie Graykowski. I was very lucky to be sent this series, um, so I very much appreciate it. Thank you, Katie, and to her team. Texas Rose Forever is a cowboy romance that takes place in Texas, which I absolutely love because I am a Texas gal through and through. This book starts a five book series. I believe there might be more following a set of brothers on a Texas ranch. This book follows the brother Cinco, and it also follows Candy, who is a journalist or an author. She takes family histories and writes them into books for the family to have. I really enjoyed how fast-paced this novel was. The banter was so fun. Candy is really quick-witted and funny. I could just see this entire series being really easy to consume and to read very quickly just based on the writing style. I will say the ending was a little bit short for me. I wish there had been a little bit more to the ending. It just kind of wrapped up really quickly. However, it was like a baby cliffhanger and I think we get to see the result of that in the next book. I recommend this if you want a short 
breezy read with a little bit of romance set in Texas with cowboys and family history, this book is for you. I almost forgot to let you know that this book has 245 pages. It is also available on Kindle Unlimited if you're interested in that. The next book I want to suggest is Baggage Claim by Juliana Smith. This is a holiday book. <laughs> yeah, It's not necessarily focused on Christmas. The setting and the time period is Christmas, but it's not like, oh my gosh, let's decorate, let's get the presents, let's wrap the presents, what does Christmas mean, you know? This 290 page novel is a contemporary romance novel. I believe it was Closed Door or Fade to Black, if that's important to you. It was very cute. I remember laughing a lot. This book follows Olive, who lives in Florida, but we find out that her family has been begging her to come back home for Christmas for a while. Finally, she relents, but we kind of see why Olive has been resisting going back home because there was a big event that happened to her several years past, literally on like Christmas Eve. Slowly throughout the book, we kind of find out what happened to her, why she really hates Christmas now because of that event she is the only single sibling in her family. So she meets this guy named Finn on accident. <laughs> I think on a plane ride or something like that. And he's just kind of like, well, I'm bored and I don't have much to do and you seem interesting. So uh, let me be your fake boyfriend. <laughs> so he does. Finn is so funny, witty, charismatic. He is golden retriever energy 100%. I really enjoyed this book because it was funny and lighthearted, but there was also Olive struggling with her self-confidence and things that had happened to her. And she's kind of like working through this and realizing some things about herself. So I really enjoyed that side of things. My favorite thing about the book though is that Finn's, <laughs> Finn's nickname for all of his Grinchy. <laughs> and so there are all of these little Grinch references sprinkled throughout the book. I think I read this in a day or less than two days. Really fun read, honestly for any time of year, but especially in the holiday season. The next few books I am going to suggest I don't own physically, but I did read them on ebook or listen to them on audiobook. The first one we have is Convenience Store Woman. This is a 176 page contemporary literary fiction novel about a woman in Japan who's a little bit older. She's in her 30s, maybe even 40s, I'm not sure, but she's getting on in her age and she's expected to take on the roles of a woman and get married and have a family, but she is just so content in her job working at a convenience store. It kind of explores the societal expectations that people have, especially about women. It explores contentment. It explores just finding what you're good at in life. And so our main character goes through this kind of process of trying to follow what she thinks she should do and some inner searching about what her life means to her and what makes her happy and then chasing after that. I really enjoyed it. It's a very quick breezy read. It made me think. Um, I will say the language is a little bit different. It is translated fiction. It might have a different tone, but I, I really enjoyed it because it was different and unique. The next book I just got done listening to on audiobook and that is Our Wives Under the Sea. This book is 227 pages and is a horror book. It was honestly so good. I didn't expect to like it because horror isn't really my genre, but it was very lightly horror. Like there were some things in it that were a little bit like, oh, what's going on? But it kept me captivated. I wanted to know what was going to happen next. The ending was very open-ended. So if you don't like open-ended endings, this book isn't for you, but I thought it worked very well with the story and what ended up happening. Our Wives Under the Sea follows two women. One of them is a marine biologist that is sent on a submarine marine biology research trip. Her trip is meant to take three weeks. However, she is gone for almost six months. Then we also follow her wife, Mary, and Mary goes through this process of where is my wife, what happened, kind of following the stages of grief and then her wife shows up again. However, her wife is not 
the same person that she fell in love with and married this whole process has changed her so we follow both of them in dual point of views what happened under the sea what's happening now what happened in the past how they met it was really interesting i had a really good time reading it and listening to it the next book we have is the alchemist this book was so sweet a friend and I were talking about it and he said that it's very simple and I agree but I think that simplicity is what makes it so pure and so lovely to read. It's a reminder to analyze where you are in life, what's going on around you, what's going on in your head and to just appreciate where you're at in life. There is time to change things or travel or explore. It's just such a beautiful reminder that where you are in life is okay but if you want to change it and you want to do something else that's okay too the alchemist is 218 pages long i ended up listening to this on audiobook however i will be adding it to my collection one day so i can reread and annotate it it follows this boy who is a shepherd he really wanted to be a shepherd because he wanted to travel and to see people and to explore new places but he gets this vision this dream that makes him think, well, maybe there are other ways to fulfill my goals too. And so he chases this dream. He has someone kind of interpret it and he goes to fulfill this dream and journey. And it ends up going way differently than he realized and thought it would go. So many things happen that he did not think would happen. He meets so many new people. He goes to all these places he never expected to go and learns all of these things. And it's just so simple and sweet. I highly recommend it if you're looking for a short, impactful book to read. The next one is very different from the previous, and that is That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon by Kimberly Lemming. <laughs> this is fantasy romance, adult fantasy romance. It does have a little bit of spice in it. We go on a journey with the main character, Cinnamon, who lives in this world where demons are evil. They come and pursue you. They attack you. So they have all of these things set into place to protect from demons however a demon shows up on her property and um he goes from attacking her to being totally chill they learn some things about the demon world and off they set on a journey to figure out more about it and what is causing these demons to act this way it's very fun cinnamon is my girl she's so funny oh my gosh i loved her so much i loved fallon the main male character who is also a demon it's just a really fun time full of larger than life characters with lots of representation it is just a good time and now there are three books in the series um with a fourth coming on the way then we have piranesi which is 246 pages this book is kind of Greek mythology, I want to say. We follow Piranesi, who is a man that lives in these cave systems. It's like a labyrinth of caves, but these are not normal caves. Some of the caves have water that goes into it. Some of the caves have all of these statues. Some of the caves have birds nesting or other creatures nesting in them. Each cave has a different part of it. What's really interesting about this book is it's like a series of journal entries from Piranesi's point of view and so he's writing about them. They seem kind of disjointed and like odd. You're just like, I don't really understand what's going on. It's very wondering. Slowly and slowly we learn a little bit more about what's going on, how Piranesi got there, what the caves actually are, where he actually is, and what his like kind of purpose of being there is. It's really interesting. It's really well done. I was fascinated. I zoomed through in two days. I really enjoyed this book. I also am a Greek mythology geek, so I gravitate towards those books and I've always really loved them. If you're not into Greek mythology, this might not be for you and that's okay, but if you are, I'd highly recommend Piranesi. I also really love the ending of the book. Next we have One Italian Summer, which is perfect for this season right now in summer. One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle is 268 pages. It is a contemporary literary book. There is a dash of romance in there, but mostly this book is about those crises we go through in life, how to overcome that. And this woman chose to travel to a place that her mom used to 
live or used to travel once upon a time but it's magical realism too because she goes to Italy and she is in the same time period as when her mom was there so she gets to kind of meet her mom who recently passed away it's really interesting I was really happy with the ending if the ending hadn't been the ending that happened I would have given this a much lower rating but it ended up being okay I liked the ending and therefore it bumped the rating up for me very fun summary read, easy to breeze through with the imagery of Italy and all of the food and the settings and locations. It just made you feel like you were there and it made me want to go to Italy so badly. <laughs> okay, my last suggestion for this video is The Honeymooners by Melanie Summer. I read this book and I loved it so much that I have read probably 10 more books by Melanie Summer. I love her writing style. It's like quick, funny just a feel-good book. In this book, our main female character is walking up to her wedding and the groom cancels on her. So she runs away to their honeymoon. It's on this island where this one family runs it together. In this 257 page book, the main female character and the main male character, the owner of the island and the resort, somehow get off on the wrong page. I think her job is to go and write things up about the resort and then be like, if you sell it to us, we can do this and fix it up for you. But he does not want to sell it. He wants to get rid of her. But she's like, this is my honeymoon. Yes, she's working on her honeymoon. I'm not leaving for anything. It is a romance book, so... <laughs> We all know what happens in the end. We just don't know how they get there. I really enjoyed that series. Originally when I read it, there were only three books out. Now I think there's five. So I haven't read the last two yet, but I do plan on finishing it. I really enjoyed this for a fun, lighthearted, summery, beachy read. I hope you can pick up some of these books or add them to your TBR, especially when you're short on time. If you like this video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. If you're maybe interested in a part two of this video, please please let me know in the comments. I would love to know what kind of recommendations you guys are looking for. I'm always kind of curating lists, but I would rather know what you're interested in and curate lists based on that. Thanks so much for watching. If you made it this far, be sure you're subscribed to the fam. We love having you guys here and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye everyone.